it came time to do the pre-sequel, we were trying to look for characters that could show up and do really cool stuff, but also had a context existing beforehand. So what we did was we looked at the characters who were actually around Handsome Jack at the time and said, are any of these characters that we'd like to turn into something? Are any of these characters worth exploring? And so what we landed on, we got Nisha, the Lawbringer, we've got Athena, we've got Wilhelm, and of course, Claptrap. There's two female characters, there's one male character, and there's a robot. It's about reflecting people as they are in, our, in the world, as we are in our, our fans and people as they are, right? Initially, when we built this universe, said it's going to be diverse, it's going to be interesting, and, and it's going to be culturally diverse, because culture is something we adore. Um, I got some feedback from Zach on the Sugar Rats and how we're going to have the Rathids attack the player, so I'm going to try out a couple of suggestions that he made, including giving them a lightning tether that could be funny. So I'm going to try it. Well, you become one of the vault hunters, one of the heroes that's sort of working with Handsome Jack during his rise to power. And his closest lieutenants, it was very clear in Borderlands 2, were Wilhelm and Nisha. Now, Wilhelm, we know what he came to become in Borderlands 2. Something that's really unique about him is you're, you're actually visually changing him. You're unlocking uh, robotic arms, robotic legs. In the pre-sequel, he starts out fully human, and as you build out his skill tree, he like slowly becomes more cybernetic. And also, he has his two support drones, which is his special ability. One of them will go out and attack and then the other one will actually hang behind and, and recharge Wilhelm's shield. He's just cool man, like you just, you feel like I'm just cool. And then we've got Nisha, who's the, the gunslinger, so she's like so wild west. Everybody loved Nisha, she was this character that we all regret killing off. Um, spoiler. Yeah. So when you meet Nisha, she is a bandit that kills other bandits. She just worse than Handsome Jack in many ways. Like she just enjoys strangling puppies. She's actually just about the most evil character in the entirety of the Borderlands universe, and, and that's kind of fun. I know people have been asking, does Nisha have the whip? Well, yes, she has the whip, and it's a long-range melee attack. So Nisha's action skill is called Showdown, and it allows her to automatically aim at enemies. It gives her a bunch of buffs to a bunch of different things, and then if you Iron Sight and then quickly switch targets, you get that Clint Eastwood feeling of like bam, 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 and then just sort of sheathing your gun really quickly. It's a thing that you're use in every single combat you get into because it's that useful. So what you're going to see here is any what, during the action skill, any guy you shoot, the bullets will ricochet okay. and hit multiple guys. So here's some perks. All right. So there's more guys here, so can, can I reset my action skill real fast? Uh, do you have it? Oh, actually, it's, it, it's, it's, going, it's going pretty cool. Okay. All right, do it. Okay, that is cool. Okay, I see the ricochet going on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that there is cool. Go. That Torque Queen did not survive that at all. Athena is a character from the General Knox DLC from Borderlands 1, the third DLC. She was just a cool NPC that fought alongside you and helped you take down a bunch of bad guys. And we really wanted to explore her story and her difficulty and balance between good and evil because she's sort of an assassin trying to find her way. Atlas is completely gone. She is out of money. She's out of food. She needs to take any job she can to get by. We also have been talking about having a character with a shield for years, but they're not as much fun to play in a video game because you're walking behind this shield moving really slow. We wanted someone who was fast and active and energetic and got into the battle. So Athena's action skill is the Kinetic Aspis shield, and it basically works where she puts it in front of her body and uh, any incoming damage that happens to the shield basically charges up its power. When you build that skill up, you can get to the point where you can take out three or four or five of those enemies with that with that shield, and that's just really cool to play with. Athena's a badass. I just feel like an awesome, like, ass-kicking superhero when I play Athena. I definitely see the disco mode. Hit it, and then basically don't get close. Oh, snap. <laughs> so the disco ball is just doing all the work for me. Yep. That's really cool. For the fourth character, I could tell many stories, but the truth is, Randy Pitchford, the president of this company, really wanted to play as Claptrap. Claptrap is a wild character. You know, we know Claptrap, he's been in the series forever, and Claptrap is a Hyperion robot, so there's a really interesting set of narrative circumstances that allow him to actually be on Handsome Jack's team in that time between Borderlands 1 and 2. The idea is great, like, hey, wouldn't it be interesting to finally play as Claptrap? But what does that actually mean? Claptrap's a little bit of, you know, a little bit incompetent, you know, he's a little bit of unpredictable. And he's kind of an idiot, lovable idiot, but he's kind of an idiot. I think Hyperion actually labeled it as malware at some point. His action skill is, is lunacy. If you don't want to be Claptrap, you definitely want him on your team because when Claptrap uses his action skill, it affects everybody in the game. 
and oftentimes for good, but sometimes just weird stuff happens, just goofball stuff, and the whole gameplay changes. People are kind of telling the story of their experience of playing it as Claptrap, and everyone's going to have a completely different story to tell. Oh, yeah, baby, come on! Warlands is all about building on what's happened before to build a stronger product next time. A lot of the things that were still kind of lingering that just needed to get out of us after we'd finished Borderlands 2 were able to get into Borderlands the pre-sequel. In weapons, it was like, okay, well, what gun fantasy are we not hitting? Because we have the Western fantasy with Jacobs, we have the, you know, American action movie star with Torg. We want to make people feel like they're having a fresh experience. You know, it's a big game. You get your money's worth when you play a Borderlands game, and that is a thrill.